Welcome to PRTV, the first episode from Down Under. We're here in the beautiful city of Melbourne, Australia. Uh, my name is not Harrison Cratch, the gentleman you've used to be seeing on uh, PRTV thus far. Um, it's currently Social Media Week at the time of filming. Um, to celebrate Social Media Week and the first episode of PRTV from Down Under, there really is no one I'd rather be speaking to right now. Um, such as his knowledge of social media, PR and communications, I could literally talk to him all night. I'm talking, of course, about Trevor Young. Trevor, welcome. Thank you, Jamie. He I, is... How much do I have to pay you for saying that? <laughs> it costs me a fortune every time you say that. <laughs> He's the Director of Strategy and, in of, uh, Strategy and Innovation here at Edelman Australia, a role he's recently taken on after his company Park Young merged with Edelman. Um, you may also know him from his well-known blog, The PR Warrior, where he is the face behind the warrior on the front line of the communications revolution. Um, if not from any of these sources, you might also read his other blog, Sweat Equity. So it's a marketing manifesto for a hyper-connected world. Um, Trevor, I'll get straight into it. It's Social Media Week. Um, for those who are not familiar with your blog and, and your time in the industry, could you give us a bit of a potted history of your time in communications? Very much a potted history. Oh, in communications generally. Well, I am an ex-journalist going back too many years. We've been in um, public relations consulting for about 20, <coughs> a bit over 20. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, the last couple of, the last few years, uh, three to four, been immersing in uh, social media more so. Uh, I guess in Australia we've had a bit of a luxury of seeing uh, the other parts of the world, America in particular, and how brands, uh, companies, organisations and the PR industry have, have been uh, grappling with it and, and using it to their advantage. And so I've been immersing for a number of years now and uh, now like to to work with enlightened clients who, who can see a big, bigger picture and work with the, all the elements of uh, what we have done in PR. So for our industry, exciting times. It exciting certainly times. is, it certainly is. You say it was about three or four years ago. Do you remember that moment when you first kind of began to engage or, or dip your toe in social media? And when was it that you really kind of began to engage a bit more and see the potential that communications was that uh, social media was going to have on PR and professional communication? Yeah, good question. I don't think that was just sort of a, a bang moment. Um, I think it was just a matter of reading a lot of things because I guess with any major trend like this, it doesn't just pop up. But it, it's a number of things that come together, I suppose, um, and we, I, I guess I, I was reading about blogging a lot and finding out about it and studying it, and it's a bit like swimming, isn't it, blogging, or, you know, or social media generally, you can read all about it, but you don't actually learn until you do it, you really learn to swim when you're in the water. Um, so I, I think social media and blogging and things like that are that's 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 where my head is at. So I start I started a blog uh, called the PR it's called PRWarrior.com and um, and I reckon I learned more in about six weeks than I did in six months or you know more learn more in probably two weeks. And I think what really got it for me is when I wrote a post and I got a lot of comments back out of it and it freaked me out to be honest. Um, How did you uh, handle that? Well, it didn't freak me out too much, but it was <laughs> it was actually a post, if I recall, about uh, all, all the blogs that I used to read. And so I, I was doing the old, I recommend these blogs because I read them and I think you might like them too, not knowing there was an audience out there. Um, so I did have comments on that, but a lot of the comments were actually from the people who I nominated. And that was pretty pretty cool because, you know, they were, I think, the top bloggers in, the, in my space in PR and marketing. So you know, you one degree of separation almost from them and I thought that really brought it home and then subsequent blog posts where uh, people are commenting and you can get a conversation going. So I think that actually getting in and swimming as it is, as it were, uh, really, really brought it home for me. And then others, other elements were incremental, I think, and layered. So when Twitter came on, I was in, got onto Twitter in November 2007 um, and I understand there's about five phases of Twitter that you go through, and I went through all of those. Meaning, you get on, uh, everyone's talking about it, so you get on. Not that everyone was talking about it in 07. Uh, you get on, nothing much happens. Um, you jump out again. Um, you jump back in again because you think you've got to do it a bit more, a bit more effort. And it's and it, everything's incremental as you're learning and going on, and it's different for different people. I'm glad you mentioned that it's a little bit daunting um, for organisations and individuals alike, I guess. Um, 
I remember when Deirdre Brokenridge gave a speech at the Public Relations Institute conference uh, that was held in, in Brisbane, Australia in 2009. Well, she, she, saw pulled, she pulled out a chart. Um, Deirdre's been interviewed on PRTV before. Uh, Deirdre, it was a great presentation. It was great to meet you. Read the books. We have read the books. Um, the book that she and Brian Solis wrote, Putting the Public Back in Public Relations, of course, Harrison's already reviewed it here on PRTV yeah. as well. Um, but she pulled out this presentation, the huge chart that had back in 2009, the plethora, I suppose, of all the different social networks that people could potentially engage with mm -hmm. or monitor and begin to listen to. Um, and it's a scary thought, being able to get involved and, as you say, put yourself out there, begin to comment, begin to listen and get involved. For companies and individuals alike, what do you recommend is the first step to kind of break the ice <coughs> and begin to dip the toe, I guess? Oh, I'd, I'd separate companies and individuals out and I'd <laughs> separate large organisations with small ones. I think. The ones that are really getting it, and hence the sweat equity thing, is is the notion that um, what what small companies can teach the big guys about marketing, because as we all know, the marketing world's changing rapidly, evolving, emerging, um, and the smaller companies are, and entrepreneurial ones are doing a lot more interesting things. Um, so I like working with those, but you've got to look at when you're advising bigger companies, you've got to take their history and their hierarchies into consideration, um, all sorts of things, culture. And I, I don't sort of look at social media as much about the tools. I think they come, if you start talking about the tools, then you're going very tactical very early. Um, but I think about, um, you know, it's a mindset and are the companies ready for it? Because it, once you open the door to social media, other things will happen. So if we're on Twitter, for example, or if we've got a blog and someone comments back, what are we going to say? And have you got a process in place to, to respond almost in real time to them? And so there's a lot to it. So I don't really advise to go in and do this or do that. I, we probably come at it from a broader comms perspective often. Um, and, you know, what are you doing in traditional media? What are you doing in sponsorships and, and, and event-based activity? And, and probably trying to look at it a little bit more holistically and... And that's why, where does it fit into that? And rather than bolting it on, I'd rather um, look a bit more holistically. Are there any companies that you've really seen evolve and begin to kind of engage gradually, and as you say, in little increments um, in your time in the industry? Um, yeah, I have. I guess I've, I, I, all I do is look at companies and brands and what, who's doing what. And um, I don't know if I'm sort of noticing them that they start small and then they grow up big. I think they all pretty much start They've all dipped their toe in the water somewhere along the line. Um, companies in America that are probably doing it better because they've been at it a lot longer. I think last year was probably a watershed year for companies in Australia where um, maybe the year before they started to get into some of these tools and then thought, well, what next? Because it was all very tactical and um, not much thought was put into it. Last year, I think there was a bit more thinking around it. Um, and nowadays when you're talking to enlightened brands about it, and I say enlightened because they're open to, we know we've got to change things, how can we do it? Um, then, you know, th that, that's all happening before us, but that's in Australia. But if I look at, I like what's happening in America when, I guess when you look at a f company like Ford, and you know, Ford's always been really pretty traditional, big budget stuff. Um, you know, traditional media, advertising, and conservative. And then they employed um, a guy called Scott Monty, who um, a lot of people in the PR field would know, who was uh, a bit of a social media guru. I know a lot of people don't like the term guru, but he was, he was, a, he was a leading thinker in social media. Um, and I think Ford's strategy of getting someone like that sent a signal that we're serious. And um, yeah, sure, they played off, they probably leveraged off his brand in the social space. And then he's now obviously been training them and getting them up and running and I don't know what he's done in the background, I'm sure he's been doing a lot. Um, and now trying to, I think at the start he was Ford Online and now you know they've got a whole lot of other different channels and mediums in the social web. But I think Ford is doing very well and in a reasonably short space of time, I believe, they went from sort of nothing to one of the most admired brands in the social space. Which I suppose is an example to all those companies out there that you can do that. You can do it. Um, obviously, you need to change your mindset. You need to say, well, you've been doing this all this time, but maybe you need to start thinking about Because if you look at traditional media as being telling one big story to as many people as possible, um, the same with ads, that's still big media. 
the whole ethos of social media is telling telling lots of different stories to lots of different people and giving them the means and the encouragement to to pass that story along. And they're diametrically opposed. Doesn't mean you do one more than the other, but they've got to coexist. So uh, it's it's quite hard, probably, for some marketing folk who have grown up in this old I say old, but this traditional way of doing something. And here we're, we're faced with something diametrically opposed. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, a few of us in PR and marketing have had to change the way we think.